Sign up today. <laughs> the following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the June 3rd, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Zed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that, well, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right, when you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is gonna toss at us. Now today, you and I, we're gonna go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're gonna go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but much, much more important than that, during this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, well, we've got you covered there, too. Go ahead and send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. And in our Tiger's Den and in the YouTube channel, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on a wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger. Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, we've got all the indices in the green. They're up nicely. The uh, laggard out here is the NDX 100, up only 14 points. That's really less than two tenths of a percent to the upside. But other than that, you've got the uh, Dow up one and a half percent. That's 389 points. The S&P one percent, 31 points. The uh, Russell's up 38 points, two and three quarters percent. Semis up nearly three percent out there. So big movers. Shakers, well, now we take a look at Goldilocks, back 30 bucks, trading out at 1703. Silver is down 31 cents. Both of these are one and seven tenths of a cent to the downside. Silver off 32 pennies, trading out at 1794. Light sweet crude is off a quarter, trading at 36.56. Natural gas. Uh, up four pennies, I believe ran right into resistance at Stevie's red line. We can take a look at that. Uh, still no bottom yet inside of natural gas. 30-year treasury back uh, nearly two uh, full points, one and 27, 30 seconds. The 30-year 30 30 trade down at 175.16. Dollar-wise, leading the charge, the upside is booking holdings at 65 bucks. Transdigium, 35, Credit Acceptance Corp, 27, the trade desk, 22, net ease, 15. To the downside, it is Regenerant Pharmacy. Pharmaceuticals off over 4%, 26 bucks. Sanderson's Farm down 11% or for 15 bucks. Shopify, $12. And Dexcom off 12 as well. So let's go to our uh, first question. We do have a few questions that have uh, come in. Let's uh, get to those. Make sure we get these out of the way. The first one coming in from Robert B. And Robert uh, says, hey, Steve, but based on your reading of the charts, has SLB made a major top? And is it getting to roll over? Or is it simply building cause for the next leg higher? So let's go take a look at, first of all, let's punch up the SLV. But I'm sure, Robert, as you know, we're going to really go take a look at the silver contract out here to get a better uh, guide as to what's going on. But here, if we take a look at the SLV, well, uh, all that it's done today, Robert, is pulled back to test support. Now, we're looking at the daily time frame. And in the daily time frame, because price was able to clear the top of its daily profile, that's at 1645, that was resistance. And we like to say that old resistance can become new support. At this stage here, the SLV has pulled right back. It's tested. And if it closes back above 1645, if we're just using the message of the markets for the SLV out here versus the silver contract, and we may see something the same or different. I don't know. Uh, but the answer here would be there's no breakdown at all. It's just a pullback to test support. So that would uh, say diffuse your question about a major top. 
Now, I'm not against that as being the possibility. It's just we have to start seeing levels of support fail on a daily time frame in order for that to come to fruition. If we look at the SLV and look at the weekly and the monthly time frame charts, those are going to be panels two and three. From left to right, we can see that the weekly chart found resistance right where it should have, the top of its weekly profile. That is bearish in structure. That's 1701, Robert. Now, the way that these bearish structured or bullish structure, but in this case here, bearish structured profile would work. The pullback today has been a test of the center of that box at 1632. Now, in order for prices to get moving to the downside, again, we're just analyzing the SLV here. We're going to go take a look at silver. May have a different message out here, but I just want to go ahead and do this for you. In the case of the SLV, a close blow 1632, not 1631. But a nice close below 1630 would then get price moving to 1496, the bottom of that box. Silver also, SLV I should say, has resistance at 1736. That's the top of its bearish structured monthly profile. So to answer your question specifically with regard to the SLV, uh, my answer would have to be, hey, look, you know where resistance is at. 1701, 1736. In order for there to be a breakout, uh, it, it, meaning your your statement of the next leg higher, well, it ain't going to happen until you see closes above those key levels out there. Now, let's go take a look at the silver contract itself. In fact, uh, yeah, so let's take a look at uh, silver. Let's do it this way here. If we look at silver, we've got the uh, we've got the July contract up. You're going to see a brand new profile that is attempting to form today. Now, we're looking at the daily time frame. Let me just simply expand this out so that way we're all focused on the same thing. I believe... Now, actually, I don't recall. Let me just switch over here. I don't recall what kind of profile. Whoops, that wasn't it. It's right here. Um, yeah, it's a bullish structured profile inside of the SLV. It's also a bullish structured profile inside of uh, silver. And so, Robert, in order for there to be, I'm just trying to go back to your language here, some type of major top, at a minimum, you need to see price takeout support. In this case here, it's going to be $17.36. So you want to watch silver. 1736 is going to be the uh, number out there. If you see a close below that, well, then you have some type of change in trend. Now, here, for example, here's the silver contract using my synthetic version. And this is just take a look at monthly monthly profile levels out here because these profiles represent support and resistance. Here you can see the bullish uh, structured monthly profile. This has taken us back into 2011. We can see as price moved down here, what happened? It got to that bullish profile, moved higher, kept testing it. I uh, did a test, uh, began first test it was in September of 2011. The uh, last and final test out here was in July of 2012. So this little sideways-ish type move could go on for a while, but it wasn't until we saw it close below the bottom of the bullish structured profile that actually formed here, Robert, between October of 2012 and August of 2013. And it was the close below that that said, okay, we've got some type of change in trend. Take a look at where we're at right now in the monthly. Not even close to that. So I'm just trying to come back to your statement of, is this possibly some type of significant major I use the word, did you use the word major? Yeah, major top out here. And here's the weekly time frame. I don't know if it actually populated. No, here's the weekly time frame. Weekly time frame, again, using my synthetic version of the contract, 1694 is a number that price would have to get through. The daily time frame, now this might show us a little different profile than what we were looking at before. Uh, not, 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 not much. So, Robert, I'm going to answer your question this way. The first chance. To confirm, not that this hasn't topped or formed some type of top, but for there to be some type of change in trend, which I really think is what you're after, you've got to see support fail. We don't have that yet, so the number to be watching is going to be $17.36. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner.
Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today, and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Dow's up 401, S&P 33. Let's go to our next question. This one coming in from Dennis G. Dennis writes in, could you look at Apple? That's what we've got up on our screen here. And uh, so we're looking at it. Looks like a possible double top. Maybe, maybe not. We don't know. So what uh, Dennis is referring to is Apple's all-time high is 327.85. That came on the day of January 29, 2020. Uh, price made that high, pulled back to support the bottom of its daily profile out there, bullish structure daily profile. We just got a chance to uh, take a look at that or discuss that price made its way back up to that level never tagged it on february 12th and then from that point forward went ahead and moved lower until it made that nice little hammer candle down here on march the uh, 23rd so at this stage here is it a double top well we'd have to call it really now we could call it a triple top couldn't we and take a look at that uh, daily time frame out here. So uh, you got 32377s where you're trading right now. You're above the top of its bearish structured daily profile, which suggests to both you and I, Dennis, that price is going to go at least tag that level, 32785. Maybe it takes it out. I don't know. The volume on that uh, trading session was 54 million shares. You're at 13 today. So it's not like it's pushing into it with volume, at least not as of 119 in the afternoon. If I look at Apple's other chart pattern out here, pull over over my other tools out here see if we've got any kind of topping signal or anything and we don't we do see that 324.65 is where apple broke down and so price has made it to that so if price begins trading lower from here we sort of know why well we don't sort of know why we do know why we know why because it got right back to where it had broken down now does this mean that it's a sell a change in trend anything along those lines heavens to betsy whoever betsy is no Rick, same thing, same deal. 
you've got first there's no topping signal and just getting back to resistance here right now um, and uh, certainly it has not broken any kind of levels of support out here and the level of support it would need to really break Dennis would be that 30228 area and I don't know if price can get down there how it's going to behave I mean, any more than anybody else at this stage of the game but uh, is it a double triple uh, Lindy out there it's possible but uh, you don't in order so for Stevie just I'll, I'll give you my my definition of a double top or a double bottom you don't know until you see how it deals with the other side because in order for it to really be a double top you've got to be able to move down and take out the prior lows out there oh the march lows out there but is it a is it uh, is it moved up to a, a significant area of uh, where we've seen price change and turn lower you know the answer is yes anyways i think i beat that dead horse enough out there dennis we won't really know until we see how price handles the 327.85 should it be able to get up to that level Let's go to our next question. This one coming in from Brent in Martinez, California. Brent wants us to take a look at uh, U.S. Steel. So Brent is long. Let's put this up. Train out at 872. Uh, 872 is above its daily box. Uh, it is with inside the weekly and the monthly bullish profile out there. So the uh, price targets, I'll finish reading Brent's question, but I just want to you know, get this off of the uh, screen here. At least right now, with regard to profiles, uh, what the charts are communicating to us, Brent, is that uh, price should go target 988. You're at 872 now. Now, brand new monthly profile just formed here in June. Bullish in structure, price is well enough above the center of that box at 753 to then say, hey, I want to push all the way up to the top of that profile, which is 1352. Now, perhaps along the way, it's going to run into some issues out here. Maybe that's what you're uh, bringing up. Let me finish reading your question. Now, I'm long from the lows back in March at around five and change. Mm -hmm. I have this in bar seven on a TD nine count. So I've got my daily time frame chart out. And so you and I are going to have different uh, Different. This U.S. Steel, yeah. This is the daily time frame. I don't have it in any bar count. I do have this as a TD9 count top from back on May 5th. And if that high gets taken out, which is 880, I mean to close above it, we're at 873 right now, then that pattern will have failed. And... Um, that pattern will fail, then would suggest a move up to 1107, its breakdown area. Now, uh, and I, I probably should really read this uh, more closely, but it looks to me like you've got this in bar 7, a TD9 count. Maybe it wasn't the daily. You didn't say what time frame. But let me put the weekly time frame out here. So the weekly time frame, what I have this in is this is going to be week number or bar number 9 of a TD9 count. Now, in order for this to generate a topping signal, we need to see price trade above 880. And so far for the uh, week, we are at 878. So it hasn't done that. But a close above, a trade, it just, uh, well, a close of trading above 880 will actually signal, trigger the signal of a TD9 count. Yeah, no, Stevie, even just those two pennies. Hey, God, you're so particular, Steve O. Uh, look, the pattern is the pattern. I'm not going to start uh, uh, modifying the pattern to meet some kind of narrative or something like that. I, I wouldn't do that to you. Uh, but of course, we do know that the high or low of a TD count can take place on bars 8, 9, or the bar following night so it could be next week now if that doesn't uh, stop price from advancing its price projection is 1396 but maybe that's the td9 count and maybe i just didn't read uh, or i misread but i think uh, that's probably what you were taking a look at out here now now that we come over to the monthly chart this is the importance of us being able to look at all three time or, or multiple time frames just so we can you know, get acclimated. So we understand, you know, it's like it's like flying an airplane. You know that those pilots are talking to each other. They want to know where that turbulence is. Nobody wants turbulence out there. Oh, welcome to 2020. Whew. Oh, oh, my goodness. Nobody likes turbulence. Hey, the turbulence that Stevie's talking about here in U.S. Steel is Stevie's red line on a monthly time frame. And I know that when Brent uh, and I first took a look at this trade, I'm sure we went back and we said, hey, you know what? In order for U.S. Steel to really have its mojo out there, it's going to have to close above Stevie's red line on the monthly time frame. And that appears to be right where we're trading right now. So you're really going to get your answer with regard to U.S. Steel based upon how it handles this area.
We looked at it on the weekly and the importance there and on the daily. So everything looks okay, but there's caution signals out here. The TD9 count potentially on the weekly time frame, Stevie's red line on the monthly time frame, and on the daily, well, still that old TD bar number eight from back on May 5th. And that's the level you're looking for price to uh, trade above. So I hope that that helps you out, Brent, with regard to our analysis of uh, U.S. Steel. Dennis writes in, this is Dennis, uh, uh, I think it's different Dennis, I believe, or maybe it's the same Dennis. I don't know. Maybe we haven't even asked anything of Dennis yet uh, from Dennis. But let's go take a look at what Dennis wants to look at, which is CMG. That is Chipotle, I believe. Chipotle out there. What do you think for the long term and what price? Uh, what price? Well, if we look at the daily time frame, here's what popped up on our screen, Dennis. Take a look at today specifically. It's triggered the potential for Rhodes Wyndham indicator top. Hasn't hasn't triggered the pattern. What would trigger it would be some type of bullish reversal candle. We're not there yet. This just says caution. Now, the last time that we saw a major top out here inside of Chipotle for its daily time frame, it was that Rhodes Momentum Indicator top. So and it could take a while to form out here. The last one did, uh, but just says to be cautious. Let me look at the weekly time frame before we go to that hard breakout here. Let's populate it, see what it's giving. Oh, and last week was bar number eight of a TD9 count. You're asking, what do you think for a long term hold right now? Caution signals are flashing. Even the monthly's got a Rhodes momentum indicator trigger. Steve Rhodes with TFN, we'll be right back. Back in the day, I joined the Hotel California in 2006, and like many of you, was drawn in by, Bam! as well as, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. You see, I believe that everything in life happens for us, not to us. And Tom ignited the fire within me to want to learn how to master the markets. So how did I go from knowing nothing about technical analysis to becoming the number one market timer for the S&P 500 in 2018 and the number two market timer in 2019? Simply put, I hired coaches with a proven track record, which led me to a whole new set of tools that I created to interpret the message of buyers and sellers. I would love the opportunity to teach you this award-winning set of tools and to help you improve your market timing. You can test drive my newsletter service, Mastering Probabilities, for the next 30 days with no risk to you. Plus, you'll gain access to archive workshops that'll take you step-by-step -step through my system. Sign up today by going to the homepage of TFNN.com and selecting Mastering Probability in the newsletter tab. Bam! If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. 
For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So, uh, Dennis, um, you know, you're, it looks to me like you're you're thinking of buying CMG, and so I'd have to tell you you've got to wait. Uh, now is not the uh, time based on what we were looking at in the daily, weekly, and the monthly time frames out here. You're asking what's that price if we see a pullback. Well, the ideal entry for you at this stage of the game would be 875.95. That's the most recent breakout in the daily time frame. Of course, should price pull back, we want to take a look at what patterns might be going on at that uh, time frame out there. So I'm going to suggest with regard to Chipotle, you just kind of sit on the sidelines for the uh, moment. Let's go to our next question out here. This is good. Looks like we're getting through all the uh, questions that have come in by email so far. And that is from uh, uh, John, John S. John in Spokane, Spokane, uh, Washington. Uh, hey, Steve, like your show? I'm glad that you do. Thanks so much. I'm in dust. Uh, where do you see the miners headed medium term? So that means he is short. D-U-S-T is the uh, Turkish symbol out here. It means he is short the um, the miners. And uh, we're just trying to populate the screen. I'll give you some of the, you know, the here's my problem with dust. You know, I really to, to really, John, to give you the best information, I know that that's what you want. I really need to take a look at the GDX. So let's do that. We're going to do you're going to trade dust off of the uh, GDX. And so therefore, its signals are going to be better than than these triples or what have you. So we take a look at the GDX right now. Here's the daily time frame. Here's what we know. We know that this made a seventh wave move. That is letter G on my screen up at the high. This is the daily time frame that we're looking at. Let me get the uh, cursor out here. It made that. It did it for that it actually confirmed that on May the 20th. Now, at the same time, it was confirming wave number seven was also confirming a road momentum indicator top. Now, at that stage, it gave us a trigger. But what it didn't do, John, at that stage was say, hey, now is the time to be short. As soon as price fell below Stevie's green line, which it did on the following session, that was a time to signal, OK, maybe you want to take a look at selling the next counter trend rally or being short. And the reason why you would want to sell the next counter trend rally was because price found support at the GDX at the bottom of that daily profile. Never the place where you want to go short, right next to support out here. But now we're clearly below that level. Now, uh, price has really been consolidating to a certain extent. Well, maybe, maybe what we're going to go do is we're going to take a look at the volume in the GDX and compare it to the volume today versus May the 27th to see if maybe there's some type of A to B equals CD down pattern that could unfold. But you're asking where could this head to medium term? Now, I'm looking at the GDX, not dust. And what you would be watching, let's just say that the uh, gold and silver continue to pull back, as do the miners based upon their signals. The level you'd be watching for inside the GDX Unless there's some other bottom signal that forms over, let's say, the course of the next seven, eight trading sessions is 2437. So that's your lower price target inside of the GDX. Now, if I look at the weekly time frame, the weekly time frame says, hey, Steve-O, not so fast. Now, why did it say not so fast? Well, it said not so fast for the following reason. Price is pulled back and tests Stevie's is testing Stevie's green line. So 3269, John is the level inside of the G. Now, that number is going to change by a penny or two, but you've got the pretty decent area. Price needs to close below all that's happened so far. And you asked me about medium term. And right now, we're on the medium term chart. And so with regard to GDX, it's saying tighten your stop. That's its message. You need to see a close this week below 3270 to then say, OK, I'm going to go check out the 3027, 2871 ish level out there. So that's the uh, intermediate term time frame. Longer term time frame is the uh, monthly chart. Obviously, we're only three days into it. We can't see price be moving higher, doing less relative energy. If we get a bearish reversal candle this month, we got a long way to go. Then you've got some type of intermediate term topping signal. But here, the first level of support is going to be in the 20. 8880 area. So, uh, John, I hope that helps you out with regard to dust. Pay attention to the GDX. Again, the numbers you're going to watch 3269, 3270. And oh, I did say we'd go take a look and see what the volume metric is today for you. So let's go do that. I am a man of my word. I always do what I say I'm going to do. And if I don't, man, it's one of those odd situations where I somehow forgot to do something. So if I ever do that to you, you tell me, because I'll be Johnny on the spot. 
and get it done, get her done, so to speak. Now, the volume that I'm referring to is May 27th. May 27th volume on the move lower in GDX is 43 million shares. You're at 23 million shares right now, John. So it seems to me like we're testing a prior swing point on lighter volume. So that dust being the volatile instrument that it is out there says really tighten your stop. Now, in the case of dust, just so you know, because you might not have known, let me pull this up on the screen out here. In the case of dust, I want to give you what the average true range is over the last 10 days. That's $2.82. So when you take a look at dust, your stop and adjusted stop should be 282 times one of the Fibonacci expansion levels, 1.27 or 1.618 out there, less today's close. That's what I would be using uh, for my stops. If those stops are below your entry level, well, then, you know, probably you don't want to turn a good trade into a bad trade. So you'd go to break even or something along those lines out there. Now, what else did Stevie want to look at out here to help you out? I don't think there's what else do I have? OK, uh, no, there are there are a few things. So we haven't looked at gold, but we know that the directional correlation between gold and the miners is important to pay attention to. Oh, that's what I was going to do. I was going to move over to my other set of charts out here. So we want to take a look at gold. We haven't done that. Uh, I don't believe we've done that. We've only looked at silver out here. So let's go take a look at Goldilocks, try to figure out what it's doing. Here is the daily time frame for gold. And really, the daily time frame for gold is doing what? Not much. Just trading sideways. We're just going to extend out the... Um, the consolidation pattern out here. And so this is just still in a big old consolidation. So that's what's going on in the daily time frame. What's going on on any other time frame that's going to make sense for me to look at for you? I'm just scanning the charts here real quickly. Do I see anything? Now, I don't see anything that shows me why it bottomed here just yet. Why it did bottom? That's gold, that is. Uh, what else do we know about uh, Goldilocks out here? Well, if we take a look at gold from its primary trading ranges, we know that gold has been consolidating, quite frankly, ever since April of 2020. This is a weekly chart we're looking at out here, and those ranges are 1695 to 1762 out there. So this really is suggesting to you that you scored nicely on dust, and you might want to consider taking your profits certainly tightening up that stop but this stage here if you take a look we've only been in june for three days out here and we've seen price explore the top of the profile and the, the uh, not profile the top of its horizontal trading range on a weekly basis and the bottom of its horizontal trading range something that has been trading within and consolidating really for two four five six about eight weeks out here eight weeks or so so i hope that that helps you out uh, john with regard to what is going on inside of uh the uh, miners out there. We've got a request here from um, uh, from uh, from someone, and that is, uh, can you tell me the first target for MNRO? So let's go take a look at MNRO out here, MNRO, and see what in the heck that is. That is uh, Monroe Inc. So Monroe Inc. right now is trading in between its daily, its daily, the bottom of its daily and top of its daily profiles. I, I, I think I could have used some better language there. But I didn't. So shoot me. First target. Well, it looks like the target. I mean, we'll pull my other charts out here for one row ink. It looks like the target might be 5288, the bottom of that daily profile. Price is trading below the top of the weekly and in between the monthly profiles out there. We'll be right back to uh, finalize the answer for MNRO. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. 
Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back. So back to Monroe Inc. out here. So when we take a look at this, this generated a Gartley sell pattern. Gartley sell pattern here, we have a extended move to the downside uh, that began back in December of 2019. Uh, bottoms out here in April, April 6th of 2020, makes an A to B equals CD. The one to one price projection was 62.89. The actual high was 62.54. Remember, we use those A to B equals CD patterns as guidelines. Not as you got to hit the exact tick, pip, point, penny. You know what I mean out here. Now, you got that Gartley cell pattern, and now we've seen. Now, the Gartley cell pattern was confirmed with this bear separating candle that formed out here on May the 28th. Bear structured profile were below the center of that. And so that says that 5288 may be the first place and where price would find support for you. However, if you do see price, and what's also at that 5288 area or very close to it, 5282, is a 0.382 retracement of that entire move. So when you have a Gartley cell pattern, which we have right now, the Gartley cell pattern provides uh, five different potential outcomes. Outcome number one is the 0.382 retracement. So that's why you're going to watch the bottom of the box and that 5282 area. If you see price close below that, then that says that price is likely headed to 4681 to 4254, the 0 0.618 or the 0 0.786 retracements out there. Out there. So that's what I see when I take a look at Monroe. You also had a question. You, you, you also had a question. I don't know who the you is because there was no name here. But we want to take a look at CRM. I believe that is Salesforce out here. And we take a look at the daily time frame chart here for Salesforce. What do we see? Even though I can't draw in the A to B equals CD pattern out here, we can see, you can visually see it. You can see both the dark cloud cover on May 12th as well as this bearish engulfing candle on May 26th have called the top there. All of the retracements have been pretty pretty small, so to speak. No key level of support has been broken. That key level of support would be 160, 72. But you've got valid um, sell signals out here without resistance failing 
And so I'd be looking at 160.72 as a place for a uh, pullback. Let me look at the uh, weekly time frame. Weekly's got us. Last week was bar number eight of a TD9 count. So you're going to have a TD9 count pattern. Now, the last time that Salesforce on a weekly basis made its high, it was with that TD9 count pattern. It did it on the bar following bar number nine on February 21st out there. On a monthly basis, what do I have? I've got price trading right up to resistance, which is Stevie's green line. So that's our take on uh, Salesforce CRM is the uh, ticker symbol. Let's go to John in uh, Sarasota who wrote in and is asking for MCHP. So let's go take a look at MCHP, see what we have out here. MCHP, that is microchip technologies. Blast off, headed to the moon today. A nice big move, good volume behind that move. Five million shares, a gap to the upside, wide ranging bar. I uh, headed back to its highs. Its highs out here were from the week of January 13th, and that's 112.47. Again, this is ticker symbol MCHP, microchip technology. What I want to do is pull over my other charts here, John, see what the daily, weekly, and monthly are signaling to us. Your question is uh, up or down, please. Well, I'm going to go with the up. Uh, that's the easy call. But the question is, we'll be able to take out those most recent highs. So you know where at least resistance may be. As we take a look at the daily time frame, the daily time frame chart, geez, that's too bad. It hasn't populated with today's wide ranging bar. But it's going to be bar number seven of a TD nine count. 109.54 is the price target where we trading right now. 108.84. So you're getting a TD nine count moving into a resistance level of 109. 54 out there. I say up, but I say be careful. Up, but be careful is what the daily time frame char uh, chart tells us. How about the uh, weekly time frame? What's the weekly tell us out here? Weekly, oh, weekly says the same kind of thing. Last week was bar number eight, bar number eight of a TD9 count. Man, that's a bunch of charts where we're seeing that same kind of setup and pattern out here. So I'm going to say up. You might say up yours, Steve-O. I get that. But um, uh, I'd say up, but uh, you better be really careful out here. Uh, the weekly breakdown level is 111.55 out there, and you've got these uh, you have these potential topping signals out here that are in place. So, John, I hope that helps you out with regard to microchip technologies. Vicky writes in, and uh, Vicky apparently is from New Jersey because the only four letters on the screen are Jets. And I'm assuming that uh, that Vicky is a Jets fan. But probably what uh, there's probably a ticker symbol, J-E-T-S. I'm going to guess that has something to do with the airlines out here. It's trading out at 1601. So just Jets is the question. Just consolidating sideways out here, right? Just consolidating sideways. Vicky, why are you interested in Jets? Is it because you believe that uh, U.S. global jets, and I don't know what's inside it. You'd have to really go take a look at and see what are the instruments inside of JETS. And take a look probably at the top five or seven or something like that. And uh, it's going to... Uh, uh, and, and then and they want to look at those instruments to see what they're doing. But we just see this little sideways pattern out here. You've probably seen it. Let's just draw it in right now. And we're trading right up towards the the top of that sideways pattern. But here's your consolidation. Look, just back. This is the daily time frame chart back on May 14th. This was trading down at, uh, what, 1127 you're at 17 bucks, so you've had a nice move, about a 50% move right now. But just the consolidation, now is not the time to buy. I don't know if you're looking to buy it. If you are, you want to buy towards the bottom of the consolidation, not at the top of the consolidation. Now, if it does break out and you're a momentum trader, different scenario. But the breakout says you've got to see a close above the uh, bar from March 26, and that level was 1805. You're at 17. Oh, eight. I'll pull over Stevie's other charts out here. Just see what we've got for signals. Any type of signal out here? I got nothing on the daily time frame. Truly nothing. On the weekly time frame, what does Stevie have out here with regard to Jets? I've got nothing. Uh, on the monthly time frame, I've also got nothing. So I've got really nothing to more to sh share with you. Not that I don't want to, just that my charts are not providing you and I with any other tools to assist us with regard to what uh, Jet's intention is, other than the fact that it's trading inside of this consolidation. So I hope that helps you out, uh, Vicky, and thanks for uh, playing the game of having fun with Stevo. So that takes care of all of the uh, questions out here. And uh, we did that before the show is over. So now let's go take a look at the markets out there because somebody probably has an interest in what are these markets doing? Well, they're headed higher. 
That's pretty simple. If we take a look at what's going on inside, let's look at the cash indices out here. Let's go look at them. Let's pull these open. Uh, yeah, let's look at some of the cash indices out here. We've got about a minute, so that basically allows us to do a couple of them. If we look at the S&P 500, what do we see? We don't see any kind of topping signal in wave number six. That's letter F on my screen. And uh, so the next topping signal could come, this is Wednesday. The earliest would be, uh, really, would be Monday. That would be the earliest out here. Uh, so the S&P 500, if we type in an A to B equals CD out here, that A to B equals CD from Steve-O's standpoint looks like this. Next price target, 32.24. As the one to one to two points. Well, I grabbed the I, I drew the wrong thing. Sorry. Let me draw in the proper A to B equals C D out there. Ooh, that didn't make sense. There we go. 3174. That's the one to 1.618. A to B equals C D. Let's go take a look at the Dow out here. The Dow futures today trying to take out their Gartley sell signal. Uh, they'll do that with a close above. A close above what, Steve? -O? A close above 25. 758.79. Looks like they'll do that. And Matt will get rid of that Gartley cell pattern. Steve Roach with TFNN. We'll be right back. Trading with extreme volatility and peaks and troughs everywhere, regardless of what you're looking at in the markets, this is a great time to see the type of analysis Basil Chapman delivers for his subscribers every market day with the opening call newsletter. Basil has been analyzing markets, providing his take for subscribers to his trading services since 1984. Every morning, Basil publishes an update for his subscribers, along with weekend and evening updates when warranted. The opening call provides traders a daily market overview with regard to the direction of the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, along with specific recommendations, including stops and targets. You also gain instant access to Basil's subscriber webinar archive from earlier this year, a dark cloud cover, and essential market analysis. Ride the Chapman wave today by signing up for the opening call newsletter on the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, JDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, 
folks, so when we began the show, we pointed out that the NDX 100 is the one that is struggling, the industry that is struggling out here at the moment. Here's the reasons why, and here's probably the uh, the, the the most concern uh, set of charts that you could see right now. And that's coming really from the NDX. So if we take a look at Microsoft, top with a TD9 count. Wave number seven pattern, I uh, sell the D points. So you've got really t three topping signals. Now, price has just been consolidating sideways out there. So it hasn't really broken down. Real breakdown would be below 171.88. But it's got a valid topping signal that's in place, hasn't been taken out. That is on Microsoft. We've already covered Apple, which is making that uh, potential drive back up to uh, its TD9 count breakdown levels out there. If we look at Amazon, this has a butterfly sell uh, pattern. It has a Rhodes Mintum indicator signal out here. It did already pull back and test its breakout level support, 233781, but hasn't taken out those highs. So here's the struggle. Still has a active um uh, it still has an active uh, topping pattern that is in play. Take a look at Intel out here. Intel's got wave number seven, letter G, a Gartley cell pattern. Uh, again, no real serious breakdowns, but you can see the topping signals. So waiting for the others to join in and create their topping signals? I don't know. If we take a look at Facebook out here, what do we have for Facebook? We've got a butterfly cell pattern out here. Again, no key level of support being broken. That would be 226. But here's the reason. You're seeing the reason. These are top uh, six holdings i'll pull over um google momentarily uh and in the case of google i don't believe i have a topping pattern is that correct no i do not have a topping signal pattern for google but it's the only one out of the five that don't and here's the uh this is this is something to be watching for inside of those equities those six represents somewhere around 47 percent give or take out there of the entire ndx 100 so folks thanks so much for uh, being here thanks for all the uh, questions that were sent in by email and uh, stay tuned because there's two more great hours left you've got my favorite polar bear david white he's up next and after that you've got uh, obi-wan kenobi to take us on home and i'll be back with you on a thirsty thursday although i think it's uh, fair to say we should have thirsty wednesday Okay, that's what I'm going to do. A nice bottle of Italian Merlot tonight. Hey, have a terrific or wonderful Wednesday, folks.